We honor those lives always, but also the people who stepped up in this community and responded. And then you go through a kind of a tough storm in November, broke some records, seven feet of snow. Uh, and we went out and saw the damage to homes and businesses and livelihoods at a time when people should have been out and about experiencing getting ready for Thanksgiving. Heroes were there again. As if they weren't exhausted enough, the same people, the same communities, the same first responders, the same firefighters, the same National Guard, the same state police, the same uh, county and city and local snowplow drivers and forklift drivers and DOT members and everybody else. You had to do it all over again. You had to do it all over again. And this time, we had reinforcements from a community that just did extraordinary things. Again, ordinary citizens, not ordinary in a bland sense, but just regular people, regular Buffalonians, Western New Yorkers, you know, throughout not just Erie County, but Niagara, Genesee, Chautauqua. They showed what I brag about all over the state to the extent that people are tired of me talking about Buffalo. Sorry, rest of state, I love you too. But, uh, this is my home. I know the heart of the people here, how tough we are, because we've seen a lot of good and we've seen some bad, not just this year, but the history. Losses, businesses, flight of our young people during a lot of the time when I was growing up, factories shuttered. We have been through so much together as a community, and yet there is no community or people stronger than right here in Buffalo, because we have been tested. We've been tested by fire. We've been tested by snow. We've been tested by blizzards and winds that were just unbelievable. Record setting in every measure. So I saw resilience, camaraderie, the city of good neighbors being so much more than a slogan, but it was also the region of good neighbors. It was not just the city, it's what we did in neighboring towns and suburbs. So this will go down in the history books. I can go through all the statistics, 37 hours of blizzard, meaning blinding, dangerous conditions, the longest sustained blizzard in the continental US for any place under 5,000 feet. I never heard of that statistic before. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> Put that one in the books. Uh, twice as long is the next closest blizzard in a place known for blizzards, Buffalo, New York. You know, the prior blizzard had been recorded at the airport of 16 hours. Skyway, I look out my window, I live right in downtown Buffalo. Almost hit 80 miles an hour. Surprised the structure stood up itself. Uh, but the statistics don't tell the story. The images that went viral around the world, the disbelief of people seeing the amount of snow piled up in front of houses, in front of substations that are supposed to give us the power to warm our homes, make that Christmas Eve dinner, the Christmas Day dinner, was gone for so many. Our power was out for many, many days. Flooding, still without heat, <laughs> uh, trying to get that fixed. Um, so we were just one small example of what I know really hit this community so hard, walls of ice, houses and covered in ice that you couldn't even break through. But those images pale in comparison to the human story. Those are the physical effects. We all saw it, I mean, in disbelief, you could not see out your window for so long, I was here. But the human toll, I went to the Buffalo police garage the day after Christmas I just wanted to look in the eyes of people from all over. This was a gathering point for other in law enforcement who told me about the pain they felt. You know, these guys are tough. They don't really want to talk about it, but I asked them. I said, that had to be really hard, going into homes and vehicles and trying so hard to break through the storm. And some people didn't make it. And I told him, I said, I know this takes a toll on you. How can it not? You're a human being, for God's sakes. 
but please focus on the so many more you saved. Don't forget that. There's people here today whose lives were saved. There's a baby in the front row you're going to meet, little Ellen, who's alive today because of the courage of the people in this room and those you represent, citizens, but also those who are trained. So we've had a lot of tragedy. We've overcome so much. Today we'll focus on heroism and what that means. What does it mean to be a hero? It means knock down and get up. There's people like our friend from the Buffalo Bills, and we have Steve Tasker to represent their incredible story, the glory years that are back. But Damar Hamlin, I had a chance to speak to him the other day, and he spoke about something that I was so touched by. I said, you know people all over this world, all over this city, of, he said, you're a household name even in New York City. He was so surprised by that. He said, your story is so powerful of what prayer has done, but your fighting spirit. And we talked about how we can use his story to go into places, you know, inner cities where a lot of kids have given up hope, and talk about being a fighter, overcoming the odds, literally coming back to life. That also is the story of what happened during this blizzard. The desire to just stay alive and fight for people to also save their lives. The power of prayer as we prayed for God to just deliver us from what was going on and help us find more people. So we'll also, we talk about those, again, we lost, but the stories of those citizens who did the extraordinary, shared their homes, put themselves in danger, shared a meal. There's so many stories, and they've been in the news, but you, know, you think about people like Jay Withy, known as Merry Christmas Jay. That's a great thing to have associated with you, Merry Christmas Jay, because people ask, what does that mean? It's a mechanic who rescued 24 people from their cars when others couldn't get through and sheltered them in a school. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the everyday heroes who could have just taken care of themselves, said, I can't go out there, it's cold, something could happen to me. That was all pushed aside. Shakir Autry, who jumped in action when she heard a stranded man cry for help outside her house. It was safer and warmer in her house. I'm not sure if your power was on, but I guarantee it was warmer than it was out in that street. But she listened to the voice calling her. She felt it. She thought, what else can I do? I had to respond. That's an everyday hero. She used a blow dryer to melt off his frostbite. She cared for him for hours until the first responders came. Craig Elston, the owner of CNC Cuts, who kept his barber shop open during the worst of the storm, probably wanting to go home, probably wanting to check in on the family. But he stayed there so people could be warm, becoming a beacon of light for the community. Or heroes like the Buffalo Niagara police and firefighters. Assistant Fire Chief Joel Eberth, Mark Wolfel, Ryan Patterson, Louis Lubert, Richard Rosso. Rosso. They, they alone rescued 42 people from their vehicles and brought them to the warmth of the airport firehouse. And then they made sure Santa was there to help bring some gifts to a young family so they could open gifts on Christmas. Never forgetting, there's little kids don't know why Santa didn't come. Someday their parents will tell them, but tell them Santa's going to be there next year. Um, these are just some of the stories. And I was luckily in a hotel we could find because my house is not in a condition with broken pipes and flooding to be in. But I think about the people even in hotels and restaurants who wanted to go home on Thursday but were still working, just a couple of people, cooking for hundreds of stranded people who should have been able to fly out of the airport, were still there by Tuesday, exhausted, trying to feed people anything they could. And I want to also recognize, and our leaders in the county and the city will recognize their teams, but state government teams who came here, I saw a statistic. They had 650 saves. I said, when you, it sounds kind of cold, what, what's a save? 650 lives that were saved during the heat of the storm or the cold of the storm.
by just the state workers who came in. And I'm talking about snowplow drivers from the DOT. I'm talking about state police officers and National Guard and parks workers and you know, the crews, the medical support. Extraordinary. 650 people because of that effort alone can watch that football game tomorrow and cheer on the bills and think about the next Christmas and how it's going to be better. That's what I want people in this room to share with the people who are out there who are dealing with, I'm sure, something of remorse for the lives they couldn't save. I want you to know that just from the state effort alone, and there's thousands of other stories, 650 people are still walking God's earth. So please remember that. Please remember that. And I went to the National Guard, the armory, had to plow our way through. I saw a lot of empty cots. I mean, they're all empty. They should have been taking a break. They've been out there for 24 hours. It was time to take a break, and they were not there. They're still out in the streets just trying to get people out there, bringing medical workers to ECMC and hospitals, trying to get people to dialysis. If they had missed their dialysis appointment, they might not have been with us. So many stories. I do want to do a shout out to the organizations from the state and thank the Department of Transportation for pre-positioning hundreds and hundreds of personnel and plows before the storm even hit, before the first snows came, you were here on the ground. Marie Therese Dominguez, our Commission of DOT, please stand up, Commissioner Dominguez. Our Office of Emergency Management. Uh, police and Fire, Stand Up uh, Three-Way Authority, Department of Environmental Conservation, Office of Parks, uh, Office of Mental Health, People with Disabilities, and my God, our State Police, Steve Nagrelli. It's nothing like having someone from Hamburg run your statewide State Police during a blizzard, Steve Nagrelli. And Jackie Bray. Jackie Bray, please stand up, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that you have done. So our health care workers, nurses, county agencies, I could go on forever and ever. You can tell this is something that, while a little time has passed, I want people just to settle in, but also know that for the rest of our lives, we'll be grateful to all the firefighters and the snowmobile clubs and the citizens and the uh, emergency personnel and the police and elected leaders and just the food banks, everybody who showed me that my pride in this community is so justified. This is an extraordinary community. You rose up, showed up. When others hunkered down, you were there, Western New York. And I'm so proud to be your governor. And I'm going to ask all of our honorees to stand, who rep all of you, all of you stand up, who are we are honoring here today. And we'll recognize your generosity and your spirit. And we're going to be giving recognition uh, to everyone, and also the utility crews. I was on the phone nonstop with utility crews. We pre-positioned, is it 700? <laughs> Whatever, 7,000, 7, sorry, I forgot. 7,000 utility crews ready to turn on the power as soon as they could get access. The stories of them walking an hour in the cold, trying to break into a station that was frozen solid so they could bring life-saving heat and warmth to people. And they were so frustrated they couldn't get through the ice. They felt the pain too. I honor them. I honor them. And again, back to, back to. There's lessons to be learned from this. We'll always do better the next time based on the experiences. Without a doubt, we're going to have an after action report. We're going to have outside consultants give us advice because in life, we can always do better in everything we do. There will be more storms. Mother Nature's had a really bad couple of years with us. Those, those hundred year floods that happen in our creeks and our lake seem to be happening every couple of years now. So we cannot deny the effect of climate change. Look at California, for God's sakes. So New York has had a lot of effects. 
But all I know is that whatever Mother Nature brings, and maybe we can get her to calm down one of these days, uh, show some mercy on us, we'll be ready. The lessons from this storm, but also the stories that we want to repeat again from this storm. And that is to know that we have the reinforcements from the extraordinary community. No matter how many people we put on the ground, knowing that all of you are out there for us. So, so you are the ambassadors for this region to the rest of the world. You showed what you're made of. Again, I'm humbled to represent the heroes, the everyday and those who are trained in uniform, who saved so many lives, and again, those we lost in our hearts forever. But you did something extraordinary. For that, I thank you. Please welcome to the stage, City of Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown. We just had a Buffalo Bills rally at Buffalo City Hall. I called the governor and I said, Governor, should I try to get home and put on a suit? She said, no, wear the Bills gear. <laughs> well, you can clap on that. <laughs> I want to thank Governor Hochul for her exceptional leadership during the blizzard of 2022. I can tell you as mayor of the city of Buffalo, there were tremendous needs that our city had. I spoke to the governor around the clock during the blizzard. There was nothing that we asked for that the governor and her team did not provide. Governor, I thank you for being there in so many ways. I thank you for your staff that worked around the clock. I also want to recognize uh, Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Dominguez, who I spoke to every day, multiple times a day, at the governor's direction. Let's please give them a round of applause. I also want to thank the governor for her leadership, her care and concern for this community in organizing this event today to honor Western New York heroes from the blizzard of 2022. I got in uh, yesterday uh, back to Buffalo. I spent most of the week in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Conference of Mayors winter meeting. And I can tell you that at Washington, D.C., meeting with mayors all across the country, we, meeting with um, officials of the federal government, Buffalo was very much on everybody's mind. And to hear people all across this nation talk about the strength, the resilience, the unity in the city of Buffalo made me swell with pride. That is who we are, the city of good neighbors, and that's what you demonstrated during the blizzard of 2022, and it was recognized by people all across this country. I um, want to just say that my wife, Michelle, and I continue to pray for the families who lost, lost loved ones uh, in the once-in-a-generation blizzard. While there, are, while there were many challenges, we are forever grateful to the many good people who worked around the clock during the blizzard. We certainly grieve for the lives that were lost. And we will never forget those precious people that were lost. But as Governor Hochul said, we thank God for the many, many lives that were saved. And so many of you in this room are lifesavers. So thank you for that. To the force of workers within the city of Buffalo, uh, I ask you to please stand to be recognized for your efforts and for your team's sacrifices in the face of the blizzard of 2022. City workers, please stand. Uh, 
And I know that some won't stand uh, because those of you who are heroes don't think of yourselves as heroes. You just did what needed to be done at the time. Uh, in the Department of Public Works, Jeremy Huron, uh, Citizen Services, Bob Prutinger and LaCandice Durham that worked on the phones around the clock taking people's calls. Uh, Buffalo Fire Department Division Chief Thomas Meldrum, uh, I thank you for your work. Let's give them a round of applause. In the Buffalo Sewer Authority, individuals who stepped up to perform essential work throughout the storm, along with the Department of Public Works workers, uh, 311 operators, the Buffalo Fire Department, uh, Police Department, Sewer Authority staff worked multiple consecutive shifts throughout this storm uh, without being able to go home, uh, some of them volunteering to work consecutive shifts. I thank you all for your efforts. Finally, I want to thank Buffalo Police Lieutenant Peter Negrelli, commander of the SWAT team, and Lieutenant Peter Kokol, commander of the underwater recovery and rescue team. Uh, the SWAT and URT teams worked together to run the search, rescue, and recovery, recovery efforts throughout the blizzard and its aftermath meaning they operated through the worst of the worst conditions during the storm. They completed missions well beyond their job duties, and they did not hesitate to work together and with other partners to figure out how to accomplish tasks that they had never encountered before. This was truly remarkable, and I, we, the city of Buffalo will forever be grateful to your service in the blizzard of 2022. Let's give them a round of applause. As the governor mentioned, I also want to thank the National Grid crews, especially the Buffalo Overhead Line Department that worked tirelessly to restore power. Like the governor, I was on the phone with National Grid every day during the blizzard, around the clock, uh, getting updates um, seemingly every half an hour about power restorations. We knew how critically important those power restorations were. I spent just 24 hours without power in my home and experienced how uncomfortable it was. We know that there were people during this blizzard that spent two days, three days, four days, maybe more without power. And as Governor Hochul said, uh, the National Grid workers here in Buffalo and those that came in from around the con country worked feverishly to restore people's power. Uh, they worked during the worst of the storm, missed their holidays. Uh, they stayed on the clock to work as quickly as possible to reach sub substations and to reverse power outages. I thank them for that work. Again, I want to just say a special word of thanks uh, to the many Buffalo worker heroes, too many to mention, uh, literally hundreds of you uh, that worked around the clock uh, to save lives, to bring comfort to our community. And Governor Hochul, thank you again for bringing us all together today to recognize and thank our Western New York heroes. And Governor, thank you for your unsung efforts during the storm and everything that you did to help us get through that most difficult time. Thank you, everyone. Please welcome Erie County Executive Mark Polenkars.
good afternoon to all. Um, first off, I want to thank our, our friends with Buffalo State for opening up this campus and, our, and this building for us today so that we could have this ceremony. Uh, it, is, uh, it is much needed in a community that has suffered so much during the past year. So thank you to uh, President Conway Turner and her team for doing so. Uh, I also uh, see so many familiar faces in the crowd today, those I've had the pleasure to serve with uh, at many storms, but especially, of course, during this most recent time during the November superstorm and the blizzard uh, in 2022. And forgive me if I say, if I don't see you for again for the rest of this winter after today, we will all be better for it. It has been one of those ex experiences that we will never forget. Uh, as a community, we talk about the city of good neighbors and how we've come together and we just proved it once again. So on behalf of the people of Erie County, it is my pleasure to be here today. To Governor Hochul, thank you for all that you've done to get us through these multiple incidences that have affected our community. As the mayor said, the governor and I spoke quite often. We talked about the issues that mattered and how we could get through this storm. And I wanna thank her for her commitment of ensuring that the troops were on the ground beforehand, the people were here to ensure that we got through the situation. Unfortunately, we faced a storm that no one anywhere else in the world could have been able to respond at the ferocity and the height of it. So thank you to the governor for all that you did to ensure that our community would get through the storm and also recover as quickly as possible. I wanna thank her team, my new best friends, Commissioner Dominguez and Commissioner Bray, <laughs> who we talk to all the time. And of course, the, the individuals from the Department of Transportation, the Thruway Authority, the New York State Dishes, Office of Emergency Management, State Fire, for all that you did. You were completely active from the beginning, ensuring that we not only could get through the storm as quickly as possible, but to recover from it as quickly as possible. And it was not an easy task, so I thank each and every one of you. To our friends in law enforcement, New York State Police, Buffalo PD, the Erie County Sheriff's Office, everything that you did to save lives. Uh, on the last day when we were about 24 hours from finishing up the storm, we shut down the emergency operations center and I had an opportunity to speak before the two shifts, because it was roughly 12 hour shifts, at the time in which they would share information. And I thanked everyone because as was noted by the governor, as was noted by the mayor, too often when we think of storms, we think of the lives lost. But in this storm, as the governor noted, 650 lives were saved because of the actions of just the state representatives. There were thousands of lives who were saved as a result of everybody in this room and your counterparts who couldn't be here today. And that is what I will try to remember is the legacy of this blizzard. The people who came together, our friends from across New York State, and we had folks as far away as Long Island come to help us deal with this storm. How we came together as a community to say, in the best of times we stand with each other, but in the worst of times we stand with each other to ensure that each and every one of us can get through it. So to all of the first responders, law enforcement, everybody who was involved, including the citizens, thank you. When you're in the heat of the battle in the emergency operations center, you don't hear about necessarily what's going on in the neighborhoods. But then I heard about it afterwards. And I heard about these stories, I read about them, and I found out about what people were doing in their individual neighborhoods just to save lives. And it brought the biggest smile to my face because it once again proved we are the city of good neighbors. We are a region that cares about ourselves and we will come to the aid of our fellow man and woman in their time of need. And on behalf of the people of Erie County, thank you. I did, may not have thanked you in a press conference because I didn't know about it, but I'm thanking you now because when you find out afterwards everything was done, you saved thousands of lives as well. Uh, there are some people I specifically want to thank. Of course, our great, incredible team from the Department of Public Works in Erie County, uh, as well as our contractors that we work with. Uh, there's one person I did want to note because when we talk about public works, often people talk about the snow plowing but then there's also buildings and grounds. And a gentleman by the name of Shandor Toth, at the height of the storm, saved a lot more lives than we will ever know. Because we had a pipe burst at our E911 call center at the public safety campus in downtown Buffalo. Every call to 911 from a cell phone goes to that location. 
if Shondor Toth, Mr. Toth, had not jumped into action alone by himself and solved that crisis, every 911 call would have gone down for the remainder of that blizzard. I want to thank Shondor for his incredible work in saving our community. Our Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Services. You often see the commissioner and the deputy commissioner in the press conference with me, but I want to specifically thank Alex Dull, Darian Pratchett, Jerry Whittington, and Sarah Bonk because of all they did behind the scenes, including going out on rescue missions. They had responsibilities at the Emergency Operations Center, but when the call came in that they needed to rescue people in Chicawaga, they jumped on the snowmobiles, they got out there and they saved lives. So to Alex, Darian, Jerry, Sarah, thank you all for your great work. <laughs> to our friends with emergency medical services as well as to Buffalo Fire, I want to thank you for all that you did to save lives during the storm. I specifically want to note Captain Scott Janowski from the Buffalo Fire Department, who for a time there was the only representative from fire at our emergency services, but communicating with us to ensure that everything was done to ensure that we saved lives as quickly as possible. To our friends in emergency medical services, Greg Gill, Ryan Sheedy, and his team, Ken Peterson, thank you for all that you did. At the heat of the time when it was really looking bad, you found a way to get people the service they need, even if it required a super task force of ambulances, tracked vehicles, as well as high lifts, and they figured it out very quickly, and hundreds and hundreds of lives were saved because of the work from emergency medical services. <laughs> now, as of last count, unfortunately, 46 individuals died in Erie County from the blizzard. And there was a task that, of course, had to be done associated with each, each of those individuals. Uh, I want to thank everybody from the medical examiner's office, as well as those who were involved in mortuary affairs from the city of Buffalo, as well as from the, the National Guard, for really taking on the worst task possible, which often was recovery of bodies, identification of bodies. At many times, we had John and Jane Doe's and finding a way to get those families the notice that they need, that their loved one unfortunately passed. So to all who were involved in that, uh, our Department of Health Medical Examiner's Office, our friends with the Erie County Sheriff's Office and the Buffalo uh, Police, including their homicide, SWAT, and underwater recovery teams, as noted by the mayor, uh, the Air Force National Guard 10th Attack Wing Search and Recovery Unit. Thank you for taking on the the toughest task of ensuring that not only were these individuals who lost their lives during the storm taken care of after their death, but their families were notified as quickly as possible so that they could begin the grieving process. Thank you on behalf of the people of Erie County. Uh, I, there's so many others, the county executive's office staff, my chief of staff, Ben Swanenkamp, for the incredible duty that he did. Uh, Jason Hurley, as well as those from the 858 snow number, most of them being my county executive staff and some of our department heads who were receiving just horrible calls from people, asking them to record their last words for their family, or could they do a last will and testament over the phone. Uh, these folks aren't trained in this type of work, so I want to thank each and every one of the members of my staff who did that. team at Central Police Services, the Erie County Sheriff's Office, including the Special uh, Services Division under uh, Chief Brian Britzolero, of course, Sheriff John Garcia, under Sheriff William Cooley, uh, Jeff Hartman, uh, the, the work that's done at the Emergency Operations Center, but more importantly, the work that's done in the field. Most people will never see, but those are the heroes that saved lives. Our Parks Department, our park rangers are out there saving lives and also making uh, deliveries of individuals for dialysis and medications. You often don't think about parks in a storm, but they were there, activated, and working on behalf of the people of our community. Uh, to the utility companies, National Grid and NYSIG, we've heard both from the governor and the mayor, and the conditions that they dealt with were horrible, as we all know. And they were trying to go out there and bring the power back to our community in the toughest conditions possible. I've seen the pictures of what these substations look like. 
It's hard to believe that a modern substation could basically be turned into a block of ice, but that's what happened, and that's why so many individuals lost power. So to our, the friends associated with National Grid and NYSEG, thank you for all that you've done. Uh, I know we worked in very adverse conditions, and our, our friends in the utility company did just as well, and to each and every one of them. Uh, your pre-positioning of those additional individuals to help us get through that storm Maybe we couldn't get out there during the worst of it, but as soon as the opportunity came, they were out there, and as a result of it, power was restored a lot quicker than what many people thought would happen. So thank you to all. Uh, to our friends in the National Guard, uh, Major Schmegel, uh, Major Cattell, Senior Master Sergeant Reynolds, Sergeant Stark, and the entire team, uh, just, it was incredible. It was incredible what you did. You, it didn't matter what the request was. It didn't matter what the ask was. You were out there doing it. So to each and every one of the members of the National Guard, people who live in this community, we're not talking about National Guard coming in from Arizona. We're not talking about people coming in from Pennsylvania, but leaving at the height of the storm when the conditions were the worst because they knew they had to get out there to save lives. Thank you for all that you did. I greatly appreciate it. And to all county employees, local government employees, departments of public work, transportation, police departments, fire departments, uh, I will leave you once again with what I said at the Emergency Operations Center on the last day. This will be a legacy of ours. Too often members in the media want to talk about the number of individuals who died or those who we couldn't get to as quick enough as they'd want. I will never forget what you did. The proudest moment of my career as county executive was having the privilege to work with you. I don't want to say serve because you served our community. I had the privilege to work with you, to see exactly what was done during the worst time we possibly could have ever faced. And I am proud of what you did. I will never forget what you did. Your efforts saved countless lives. We will never know the exact total of the people who were saved, but we will know that the work that you did saved so many lives that each of those individuals has an opportunity to cheer for our Buffalo Bills to victory tomorrow against the Cincinnati Bengals. And when we look back on our careers, we will know that the work that we did during the storm was incredible. Thank you all. To help read the names of the honorees, please welcome our MCs, former Buffalo Bills wide receiver, Steve Tasker. <laughs> Brianna and her newborn baby, Ellen Russell. Okay, um, I'm so honored to be here today, um, albeit at the home of the Buff State Bengals. Uh, what are you going to do? Um, the, I'm so grateful that this uh, event was put on uh, to give us a chance to um, acknowledge heroism among us, um, whether you're a plow driver, a mechanic, a call center operator, first responder, just a normal citizen, we thank you so much. And thank you, Governor Kathy Hochul, uh, for organizing this event to, rec to recognize our community members. Uh, thank you, Byron, Mayor Byron Brown, and County Executive Mark Polengars. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Really appreciate you and your leadership during this time when we needed it. Uh, now, I, before I get going, I want to uh, introduce you uh, to my new friend, uh, Brianna Russell and her three-week-old daughter, Ellen. Uh, I'm not going to say too much, but I'll let Brianna tell her story and as an example of why we're all here. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is a huge honor to be here, to be included in this wonderful event to honor all of the people who helped save my life and helped save my daughter. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the heroic efforts and all of the help 
that we received from the town of Tonawanda, um, Twin City Ambulance, the Kenmore Mercy Hospital, um, not set up to help me or my baby girl, but they did an excellent, excellent job going above and beyond. Thank you to the doctors and the nurses and the administrative staff that went above and beyond and continued to work days on end to make sure that myself and other people needing medical assistance and first responders that we needed care got the care. We couldn't have been here without you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Give one more round of applause for Brianna and Ellen. Um, yeah, before we go any further, I don't want to get a, miss a chance, an opportunity to say this. I'm, um, leadership is important, and we've seen how common citizens have risen to the occasion, and today we're going to meet some of them, uh, but it's also it should be said that at the highest levels of our city, Mayor, Mayor Brown, our county, Mark Polencars, and now, of course, the state level, Kathy Hochul, it's a par very powerful position these people find themselves in, and they use their power in this instance to save lives. There is no greater testament to your legacy as leaders than that. Thank you so much. Now, uh, the rest, this is how this is going to work. Um, we're, the rest of this is going to work. Now, for the first, let's welcome back to the stage uh, over here, Governor Hochul, County Executive Poland Cars, and Mayor Brown. We're going to recognize some heroes by bringing them up, read a little description of what happened to them during the storm, and the governor is going to give them a medal of public service from Governor Hochul, Mayor Brown, and County Executive Poland Cars. And before we start, uh, we want to acknowledge also this is a very incomplete list. Hundreds of people were involved in saving lives. Um, so many people will never, will never know the act of heroism that they performed on behalf of someone else, another fellow citizen. But we, there are some extraordinary people among us that extended a helping hand that we want to acknowledge. And today, these are just an example of the extraordinary heroism we've seen in media. We've heard stories about them and we've gotten a chance to find out who they are and take note. These names are, and, and we're gonna introduce these people in no particular order at all. So let's begin with the first, Shakiri, Shakira Autry. Shakira, please come forward. <laughs> On Christmas Eve, Shakira is a mom of three. She discovered a man nearly frozen outside her residence after she heard him screaming. She and her boyfriend Trent carried Joey White into their house, used a blow dryer, as you heard the governor mention, to melt the ice off his hands, saving his life. She's a Christmas angel. Shakira, thank you so much. And now a group of, a group of heroes, Kenneth Turner, Juliana Stella, Margaret McGee Smith and Edward Spence. Would you please come forward? <laughs> Working with the Red Cross, Kenneth was the Buffalo Blizzard director in charge of overseeing procedure and client support. Juliana was the condolence care lead responsible for putting together teams to assist in recovery efforts and fatality assistance for families. And Margaret was the disaster mental health team lead, assisting in providing mental health support for families who were affected. Thank you all. <laughs> Edward was the disaster spiritual care team lead, assisting in providing spiritual support. Thank all of you for your help. Let's give Kenneth, Juliana, Margaret, and Edward a round of applause. Craig Elston, will you come forward? <laughs> Craig is the owner of C&C Cuts Barbershop. Craig and his C.C. Cuts Barbershop on Fillmore Avenue became a beacon of light. They sheltered up to 30 strangers and neighbors overnight during the storm. Thank you, Craig.
Now I'd like to introduce Muhammad Alam, Manik Manjumdar, Muhammad Osman. <laughs> Muhammad, Malik, and Muhammad worked together to coordinate bringing essentials to those in need and help shelter locals who were stuck and without heat over the course of the blizzard. Thank you both, Muhammad, Manik, and Muhammad. And I'd like to introduce you to Bob Hood, Jim Beals, Matt Bowden, and Rodney Mikulak. These are the Shawnee Snow Chiefs, a snowmobile club. Bob, Jim, Matt, and Rodney volunteered in emergency response throughout Niagara County during the storm using their snowmobiles and grooming gear to get down impassable streets to help those who had been stranded by the storm. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Nathan Fix and Tony Johnston. These are Genesee County Snowpackers, the Snowmobile Club. Nathan and Tony spent roughly 17 hours driving a snowcat with a convoy of first responders to rescue people stranded in cars in Genesee County. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, from the Northern Erie Snow Seekers Snowmobile Club, it's Richard McNamara, Andy Braunscheid, Bill Perone, and Don Dawidko. So, excuse me if I butchered your name. Don, Ron. Richard, Andy, Bill, and Ron of North Erie Snow Seekers used their groomers to assist rescue efforts during the blizzard. Over the course of three days, the groomer traveled 270 miles, rescuing 41 people, transporting essential workers, including plow drivers, medical professionals, so they could get to do their job as well. Richard, Andy, Bill, Ron, thank you so much. Cassiopeia Leahy and David Purdy. Cassiopeia and David cared for the body of Carolyn Eubanks, a stranger who collapsed and passed outside their house, outside their ideal street home in Buffalo on Christmas Eve during a rescue attempt by the woman's family. They stayed with Carolyn Eubanks until help arrived. Cassiopeia and David, thank you. Now allow me to introduce Sue Fickoff, Sandra Eastley, and Angelica Coleman, People Incorporated. Sue, Sandra, Sue and Sandra are direct support professionals who both worked Christmas weekend for Prater Willie syndrome individuals at their home in Lackawanna. They had to safely relocate people they cared for who had lost power. Angelica is a direct support professional. She spent three days Christmas weekend making sure that seven, the seven people she cares for with developmental disabilities at their home in West Seneca were safe and sound. Thank you, Sandra, Renee, Dwight, and Angelica. <laughs> Ephraim Rex Heppy, owner of Gino's Pizza. Ephraim and his Geno's Pizza fed local hospitals, providing thanks and energy for our healthcare professionals. Thank you, Ephraim, and it's true testament that all of us can do something, even if it's providing pizza. Matthew Pritchard from Target. He's the store director of the Target on Walden Avenue. He and his team that took in two dozen stranded motorists and shoppers, they provided round-the-clock hospitality for two days. They welcomed everybody inside, hot drinks, blankets, seats, portable heaters, inflatable mattresses, pillows. Their hospitality included a watch party for the Bills at Bears game. All right. Go Bills. Thank you, Matthew, and your team at Target. Alexandra and Andrea Campagna. 
What happens when a group of South Korean tourists get stranded in front of your house? You welcome them in and invite them to stay. The unexpected hosts, Alexander and Andrea, welcomed in the tourists and celebrated Christmas with them in their home watching football, sharing stories, and eating Korean food. Thank you so much. Jay Withy, community member, better known as Merry Christmas Jay. Jay, a mechanic, rescued, 20, rescued 24 people from their cars and sheltered them in a nearby school. Thank you. Yeah, Jay's also going to the Super Bowl. Tara Ellis from Feed War. Freedmore, Western New York. <laughs> Tara is the president and CEO of Feedmore, Western New York. In advance of the storm, she and her team distributed 200 emergency food kits. Then, during the storm, they completed more than 5,000 phone calls to check on clients, even climbing snowbanks to deliver food as early, as, as early in the day as possible. Thank you, Tara, and your team at Feedmore, Western New York, for going above and beyond. Fire Chief William Major, Assistant Fire Chief Joel Eberth, Firefighter Mark Wolfile, Police Chief Brian Patterson, Police Captain Louis Lobert, Lubert, Police Lieutenant Richard Russo, Niagara Frontier Transportation Authority. William, Joel, Mark, Brian, Louis, Richard, they combined to rescue 64 individuals, including children and one pet from vehicles surrounding the Buffalo Niagara International Airport who had been stranded during the storm. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Dr. Erkin Sozin, nurse practitioner Jillian Panuski, Registered Nurse Bridget Henry, Certified Registered Nurse's Assistant Colin Morrissey, Matthew Balin, Meg Riley, and Jennifer Snyder from the Erie, Mount, Erie County Medical Center. Please come forward. <laughs> Dr. Erkin and Nurses Jillian, Bridget, and Colin rescued a family with an infant outside of ECMC on Grider Street and handled 150 civilians seeking shelter from the storm. Director of Nursing Education, Critical Care, Balin spent four days supporting nurses in critical and emergency units. Thank you all. <laughs> Assistant Vice President of Critical Care Emergency Service, Meg Riley, developed a plan to furnish meals and, and rest areas for staff who were unable to leave the hospital as well. And Nursing Care Coordinator for the Emergency Department, Jennifer Snyder, consoled grieving families in the emergency room who's experienced the terrible toll of this storm. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Colleen McNamara from Stutledge Innovations. Colleen stayed at her business, Stutledge Innovations, during the blizzard. Over the course of three days, she welcomed 10 stranded travelers from Transit Road inside. They enjoyed their time together watching the Bills game, sharing a Christmas Eve dinner, and making the most of their unexpected time together. Thank you. <laughs> Felicia Williams, AMR Ambulances. Felicia was stranded in her ambulance for 16 hours. After being rescued, she and an off-duty Buffalo firefighter used their own personal Jeep to transport people to the hospital. Thank you, Felicia, for going the extra mile. Dennis Cavell, Reimer Home Services. Dennis and others at Reimer were not able to travel to customers in need. They used FaceTime to walk customers through any heating and plumbing issues they were experiencing, going the extra mile to help people help themselves. Thank you, Dennis, for all you did. You <laughs> this
this is that concludes our honorees for having them on stage. We're going to thank you, all the honorees. You collected. Yeah. Okay. Thank you to all the honorees and to all the good neighbors and public servants that attended today's events and all those that we know about and don't know about who we can't acknowledge. Thank you so much for your dedication to this service and the community. We're going to take a picture with Governor Hochul and, and Byron Brown and Mark Polenkars over here as a group. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for what you've done for our community.